Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Quackalope. Today, we're gonna do another right for you, wrong for you video for Homesteaders by TMG Games. Tasty Minstrel Games. Mm -hmm. Homesteaders is a game that I am reasonably in love with, and you are... I'm, I, I enjoy this one a lot, actually. Okay, so this yeah. is one that you enjoy a lot. So this will be a completely biased review in so, favor of... just go buy it. That's really all we need to say. <laughs> See you later, guys. Oh. <laughs> this whole series is built around the concept of some games being right and, and those some... same games being wrong for mm -hmm. various groups of people. Yeah. And in this Right For You, Wrong For You series, what we do is we try to break down our decision process mm -hmm. when deciding if we're going to add a game into our gaming library. Yep. Those points are the overview, the theme, the accessibility, the gameplay, the modes of play, the innovation, and finally, the price. Yeah, which is the big one. Which is the big one. So, if you're interested in Homesteaders by Tasty Minstrel Games, a game that we both enjoy, plays two to four, 60 to 90 minutes, ages 14 plus, Jan, give us an overview. So, Homesteaders is an auction and bidding game in the old, old west. You have a homestead and you're trying to build out your very own city. And you'll do that by essentially bidding for new tiles, getting those tiles into what I like to call a tableau. It's a tableau yeah. to a large degree, yeah. And then using your workers or your small meeples, I'm not sure if they're, they're considered workers, but your pawns, to do certain actions that are going to get you different elements into an economic engine as the game goes through. You're building out a community, mm -hmm. right? I learn games through theme, so I'll describe it through theme as mm -hmm. well. You're going to market, bidding on the limited resources that your homestead or, or kind of the community has in order to bring back what you need to build a salon, a restaurant, a workshop, whatever you need for your community. And just like the old, old west, this is all about trading. So you'll be getting yes. goods in order to trade for other goods in order to trade for actual properties or other things you might need. And as your community expand, you will have more people join your mm -hmm. community. They will be able to be assigned to places like the Foundry, which gives you a steal every time the game round cycles. Mm -hmm. So it's got auction and bidding. Mm -hmm. It definitely has elements of city building. Mm -hmm. and. In a way, it has some worker placement yeah. as well. Yeah, and, and, and the, like economic engine building also. Not in the Euro style that you no, think not of. No. But and at the end of the day, this is a victory point focused oh, yeah. game. Mm -hmm. So despite everything that we just described, it is going to come down to coin. And coin can be collected in a variety of ways. Some of your resources are worth victory points. Mm -hmm. So if you're better at producing them, you score more at the end. Some of your cities will be end game scoring specifically. So like late game construction, like a bank or something, will have victory points tied mm -hmm. to it. And then there's a mix of other things. Every single tile has a range of victory points, so you're kind of doing this balance. Do I want resources early on that'll allow me to build late game structures? Or do I start hard and heavy into things like the restaurant, which isn't as good at producing, but is real good at giving me score at the end. Yeah, so you're either a mass mm -hmm. or you build. Yeah. There's not really two ways about it. Yep. So if that overview seems like something you might be interested in, this might be right for you. Let's swing into our second point, which is going to be the theme. Mm -hmm. What is the general theme of this game? Well, as we said already, this is Old Old West. We're building up a city, a small little town. Mm -hmm. And besides that, I don't feel there's a lot more here. Well, but the question of theme for me goes beyond just a conversation about what it is. Mm -hmm. It goes into the idea of mechanics and mm -hmm. gameplay and rules reinforcing and implementing that theme efficiently. It's how I learn and play. Yeah, so for this one, I would say that the element of trading isn't really that apparent between players. Because for example, um, like in the old, old west, people would go and they, I would be like, hey, Jesse, I need that cow. How about I give you five apples and two pieces of wood? Would you give me that cow? In this game, that's not really doable. But You're doing you this are, against like an artificial You are trading player. to the bank, right? Exactly. So there is, I, for one, 
when learning the rules of this game, felt that the theme came through very clearly. Mm -hmm. The element of trading that you're bringing up still came through because while you're not trading between players, you are trading into the bank. You are paying something. You have to have a steel and a lumber and a brick in order to build something like a warehouse. And I think, like for example, the the idea of the buildings and how they start scaling that tableau also comes through fr pretty well. You're able to do some crazy things by the end of the game, which also reinforces what the game is trying to do with its theme. Well, and the last point that I'd like to make when it comes to theme is, while it does seem like you're building out a tiny little town of tiles, this game does a surprisingly good job at making me feel like I have a working community. Mm -hmm. The buildings all produce things that make sense for them. The way that you assign workers, the type of resources that you can get and upgrade, the way that if you, you know, don't win at the auction, you build out your railroad. Everything sort of expands in a way that feels appropriate to the homestead. And, and I think that this is the type of game that really rewards building that have good cohesiveness with mm -hmm. each other. You know, synergy here is quintessential. Yeah. So if you're investing in a particular strategy and then you immediately decide to bring in a new potential occupant to your city that you shouldn't have really brought, it it's gonna affect you. Off. Mm -hmm. So if you like the idea of a game about homesteading, about a small kind of Midwest town doing its best to build and grow, and theme maybe isn't the main reason you play games, because mm -hmm. this is certainly a flavor on top. Yeah. But this theme still is convincing enough to you or attractive enough to you like it is to me. This game still might be right for you. Oh yeah. We'll move on to our third point, which is going to be accessibility. How accessible is this game? I would say that this, uh, there's a little bit more of decision making that has to happen here. There's, there has to be an understanding of how basic economic, economics work. If you want to win. Exactly. Which now, is kind of like the point. The first two times I played, I didn't win. And I still had a really good time. That's because you were outplayed. That's true. <laughs> by people who knew the game better. But I still had a genuinely good time playing the game mm -hmm. and learning the game. So accessibility wise for me, the more games you play, the better you're going to be. You're going to know what might come up. You're going to know the potentiality with the tiles, mm -hmm. what late game tiles you might want to build towards, right? Yeah. But I did enjoy learning and playing mm -hmm. the game beyond the fact that I didn't win when I first started. And so I think like the, the main question that we should pose here is for what type, well, what type of gamer and at what level would this game be right for? I, I think this is a mid-weight game. I think this is a little bit more complex than some of your Catans or Ticket to Rides. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think it's as complex as some of the auction and building and like tableau games that I've mm -hmm. played and that I have in the collection. And it doesn't quite take as long and it is quite as hard to learn. This is a great progression game in terms of like someone learning and experiencing the community. And a core game for, for me, if I just want to have a game on hand to play in like 60 to 90 minutes with a group. Yeah, for sure. I, I think uh, I think Homesteaders does a really good job of kind of like maintaining a rhythm throughout sure. its its play. It's a good way um, to say it. So it keeps that rhythm going and it keeps a very interesting pace. Um, and I like how brisk playing it can become. Mm -hmm. uh, I would 100% agree with you. I think this is a mid-weight game for anybody that's mildly interested. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you're committed enough and you haven't, you don't have a lot of experience in games, you could probably learn this really quick. As long as you have a good teacher. I have yeah. friends that wouldn't learn this game, mm. right? Like that's what I kind of declare midweight games as. I have people that wouldn't play it because yeah. of the complexity and the decision making. And I then think I have friends that find it easy and love it immediately. Yeah, I think, I think it finally boils down to having a really good understanding of conversion and value, mm. right? Because yeah. having a uh, understanding what you have back here yeah. is very important to even having a good grasp throughout the entirety of the game because not having certain resources is a big damper. Yeah. So so that's definitely important. So if you're okay with a mid-weight game, mm -hmm. if that kind of strikes your fancy, one that can fit into most average gaming groups mm -hmm. and be compelling and you're okay being a decent teacher, this might be right for you. Now let's refocus onto the gameplay specifically and touch on a point or two that we find stands out. What is your favorite element of gameplay? I have to say that the thing I like the most is the auction mechanic. Hmm. I don't think out of the auction games I played, I've seen one where you have to 
be in three separate auctions almost at the same time, and I think that's really exciting. It does a neat thing up here, depending on how many people you're playing with, mm -hmm. you could even have another auction board spread out if you get the expansion, mm -hmm. which actually, I think, plays up to five people. Yeah. But like you said, we're gonna have tiles up here that you're bidding against mm -hmm. that give you access to building certain parts of the town, and you are bouncing from auction one to auction two to auction three. Now, the interesting thing is I thought in my mind, that the auction is what I should mention about this game. Yeah. When it comes to gameplay. It oh, of is course. The, it's the core of it, right? Yeah, auction I'm, bidding. I'm glad you mentioned it, because it's not what I was going to mention. <laughs> it isn't. I felt like I should. Yeah, but and for me, the thing that stands out the most is, is going to be the town building mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the, the trading of resources. Yeah. That my favorite gameplay mechanic comes down to efficiently managing my production and what I can build moving forward, mm -hmm. which makes victory points salient and important when playing this game. It's something I actually pay attention to. And oftentimes I find in games like this, kind of a general term, that the victory points matter less. Yeah. Like you get to the end and you add them up and you find out who won, but there was really no incentive for them existing in the first place. I find that in this game, I'm paying attention to them and to the production from the very beginning which I like. What I what I like about the building aspect of this mm -hmm. is that it's immediately apparent when you're doing something well. Mm -hmm. Because suddenly, out of nowhere, you start having more cows, mm -hmm. or you start having more metal, and then you can trade that metal for the two coins that you needed in order to buy that really great building that you've been eyeing for at least two turns now. And it, it, it ramps up in a really nice and refreshing way that just feels very fulfilling. I do have to say, on the auction and bidding though, my issue with it, the thing oh. that might make this game mm. wrong for some people is- Saucy. I never quite know what the trade value is on everything at the same time. You mentioned mm. earlier in this review that part of the core gameplay of this game is knowing the value of what you have behind your screen versus what you're bidding or what you're paying for things out in the open market. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to the auction and bidding mechanic, I always feel like I shouldn't pay more than six, <laughs> but sometimes I should. Mm -hmm. and, or I always feel like I've overspent if I've just spent 12 on access to a property, but sometimes that was a really good deal. My core issue with the auction and bidding mechanic specifically, while I find it interesting that you're in multiple markets, the play between players, the fact that you're always kind of pushing each other on variable markets, I never in the back of my mind know exactly how much every tile's worth. And some people in our gaming group do. But that's the thing. That's what I think this particular board is so fascinating because it's all about perceived value. Mm. Tiles in this game are worth whatever the players think they're worth. Ah, but so you're not, not having... Because victory mm, points in this game have a very specific and intrinsic value. But at the same time, the way that players are building out their cities mm -hmm. is what makes those buildings worthwhile. Because if you look at this and the way that the majority sure. of the games goes through, you're just getting three, five, ten points here and there. The only big buildings come at the very end. And I understand at that point, yeah. oh my god, this is super important that I do this right now. Sure. But before that... And one of the coolest things is you're not actually bidding for a specific building, you're building for a particular type of building. Yeah, the option to pay for potentially a green or an orange. So you might be actually bidding against a building that's worth $12 to you, but only $6 to me. Exactly, so if I might be going for the restaurant, but you might be working for the trading sure. post. But then we have completely different gauges of what we're willing to spend on that, which sure. is why I find this so fascinating, this idea of one-upping each other all the time, and that's essentially how the, you know, the auction auctioning yeah. here works. I think it's really interesting and fun. I, I think that's fair. I, I do think, though, that my point still stands. No, I don't think so. There is a, don't, don't pay attention. <laughs> there is a reward in this game to knowing the value of everything. Mm -hmm. And I just don't play games like that. I try to, but sometimes I just want to relax and enjoy. Mathing this out can lead to a victory more so than just playing it. But playing it, I want to reiterate, is still really fun. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, 
If we haven't scared you away, if my gentle criticism and your love of apparently the auction... What? That's a cool auction mechanic. <laughs> this game still might be right for you. So we're going to move on to the next element, the modes of play. Yeah. What does this play best at? What can it play at? What's going on? Definitely at higher player counts, the more people you have on this, the more exciting those auctions are gonna be, the different values are gonna come up, there's gonna be more action happening, there's gonna be a lot more resources going to and fro from everyone at the table. Yeah, I gotta be honest, I've never played this game at two. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know if that's just not the environments I've had it in, mm -hmm. but I've played the game multiple, multiple times and it's always been brought out when I'm wondering what I should play from three to five players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is one that stands out, that I can get done, that I can teach quickly and efficiently and we can enjoy for about an hour. So I think that's a fair point. And again, I think that's because of how this auctioning system works. Yeah. Because everybody's like pushing and everybody has different gauges and different prices for everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it really challenging because you're trying to not just understand the game status, but you're also trying to understand the player's heads. Yeah, so for us, this game really shines three and above, mm -hmm. three to five, five if you have the expansion. Now, the expansion, since I brought it up, we should touch on. It adds some fancy larger resources. Yeah. It adds some tiles, and it adds a fifth character. I think it adds some like event cards and things that actually change the core mechanic of the game. But overall, the expansion is one of those expansions that just sort of fits back into the box. Yeah and enhances the overall play experience and increases what you can do with it. It also adds random events, right? It can, yeah, mm -hmm. it can add random events, but you don't always have to play with them. Yeah. So my advice on the expansion is if you pick up the regular game and you like it, the expansion enhances the regular game, mm -hmm. but doesn't dramatically change that. Yeah, it's not like a need, need expansion. But know? here's the thing, oftentimes I find that expansions that just enhance the core game are some of my favorite. Because mm -hmm. they don't try to change a game I already like. They just give me more to do with it. Exactly. But you have to know the most important thing about that sentence. It has to be a game you like. Do you like that core game? Yeah. So, if three to five seems like a reasonable player count for you, uh, if what we've described seems accessible mm -hmm. to your gaming group, this might be right for you. Now we're going to move on to our second to last section, which is innovation. Mm -hmm. Is this game innovative? If so, in what ways? And if not, does it matter? So this one's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't a recent title. This is always a hard question for us. Yeah. Both because of the time frame, like mm -hmm. our context of what is innovative is hard. Mm -hmm. The question of innovation in itself is hard because it's within our circle. But you just brought up an interesting point. This is not a recent game. Not at all. This is a pretty old one. So, is it innovative? <sighs> well, I... It's tough to say without having a thorough understanding of the current time where this was prepared sure. and, and submitted. Um, I would say that amongst the auctioning games that I've played in more recent times, I still feel this holds up. Mm. And I still feel that the things it does and the way that it approaches auction is interesting enough for me to want to play it more and your, want to purchase. Your description of the auction mechanic throughout this review has convinced me that elements of that is to some degree innovative. But the, the way is, that it ties, mm -hmm. the way that it ties to what you're building in your tableau, I haven't played in another game. That doesn't necessarily imply that no other games does that. Sure. But within our limited view and our what we've been able to play up until now, yeah. that's definitely something we it. haven't seen. And I, I haven't experienced it at least to the same degree or as, as well as this does. I like this game a lot because of that. Mm -hmm. And for me, that stands out as an element of innovation. Yeah, I, 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 I do agree with you. I really like the auctioning in this one. And, and the reason why I like it is because the, the level of player interaction is really, really high. Hmm. Right? You're, when, when that's happening, and, and it's interesting, there's, there's almost like a um, multiplayer solitaire mode where everyone's kind of like building up their engines. Sure. And then there's this entire portion when it's completely dependent on everyone to be paying attention to what's happening here. Sure. So that transition of having like really big moments of interactivity and then suddenly going to very secluded portions of just brainy thinking. Where and am I putting my workers? Out. What's generating, taking the resources, mm -hmm. stuff like that. I, I think that's, I think that's a really 
interesting approach to an auction bidding game. And I think it, 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 it takes and balances two very separate genres mm -hmm. in a way that works well together. So the question comes down to innovation. And is it or not? For us, <laughs> it seems to be. I can say this, it is a staple in my current gaming library. It's something that isn't leaving my shelf, and mm -hmm. we have a lot of games cycling through. A lot of games leave our shelves. <laughs> yeah. And it's not leaving my shelf because I don't have another game, and I haven't found another game that does what it does. If I have three to five people over, if I want a game that has that element of player interaction, mm -hmm. while still is rich and thinky enough when it comes to kind of the solo tableau building, this is what I'm gonna grab. Yeah. So, at the moment, yeah. It stands out. Yeah. If you want a game that does something better than anything we've experienced, <laughs> and if we're wrong, leave a comment in the comment yeah, section please, down below. Please do. Let us know what else we need to play. <laughs> he just played Azul for the first time. I did, and it was great. <laughs> I had that's, a great time. That's beyond the point. If innovation is or isn't important to you, if this game doing something that we find kind of intrinsically unique and different uh, stands and out, this game might be right for you. So we're gonna come down to the last section. Oof, which is price. Okay, so there's different options here. Okay. There's the standard Homesteaders edition. Okay. And as we said, this is not a recent game. So there's recently been released a 10th anniversary edition, mm -hmm. which is what you're seeing today on the table. It includes sure. metal pieces, it includes really nice meatballs, but at the end of the day, it's still the same game. It just depends on what type of aesthetics you're interested in. That being said, though, the 10th anniversary game is the one that's tied to the expansion. Mm -hmm. So, as far as production and aesthetics matching up, that's kind of the one you want to pay attention to. Yeah. So how about you stop dilly-dallying and you give us that price? We get to the price. Right now, you can get the core of the game, the 20th anniversary edition of the game, for right around $50. Mm. You can get the expansion pack, at retail for around 80, on sale for around 60 for both of them. So you're looking at 80 for everything, mm -hmm. 50 for the core game, 60 potentially for the core game and the expansion. Okay, and the expansion by itself would usually retail, I'm assuming, at 20 to 30? About 25, yeah. Okay, okay. And I, I agree with you that the 10th, the 10th anniversary edition is wonderful. Sure. But if you are really strapped for cash and this game seems great for you, I would not feel too horrible with just finding a copy that's from the original printing and trying it out. So are you saying that 50 is overpriced in your sense? No, of not at all. I, I, I do, we got <laughs> metal pieces. Yeah. I don't think we can complain here, guys. 50 is a great price for this one, honestly. I think it's, Really, it's it's right there where I would feel comfortable. Custom meeples, different sizes. It's it's a good production overall. The, the cardboard is thick. Everything mm -hmm. is sturdy. Everything's made well. The gameplay, as far like that we've talked about for the last twenty minutes, mm -hmm. is rich and inviting. And if you like this style of game, it hits kind of that sweet spot when it comes to mid range, like mid weight games. Production quality is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The expansion adds to the overall experience. I would pay $60 for this, hands down. Yeah, yeah, but my point is essentially like, if $60 is a barrier for you, because it, it is for I some people. You. I hear what you're saying. There are options as well. I hear what you're saying. it's a good saying. game. I hear what you're saying. But, where's the but? I hear a but coming. There it is. The core argument, <laughs> the thing that we really should be paying attention to is right at market, right at retail, not having mm -hmm. to scour kind of the back streets. Mm -hmm. We find the current price point of this game. Oh yeah, very, very well. Very reasonable, for sure. Cool. I think we can both agree on that. Yeah, yeah. So, if you've made it to this point in the video, you should know if this game is right for you or wrong for you. Mm. There's a strong chance that we'll have a mix here in the community. If that's the case, please let us know your thoughts. Whether you've played this game, it's been around for a while. Oh yeah. So some of you have played this game before. Let us know if we hit on correct points, if we missed some points, if this game isn't innovative at all and we completely overlooked some game that we've never played before. Like I said, he just played Azul. I'm a fledgling, what can I say? <laughs> Which disqualifies everything we've done. Yeah, don't ever listen to me at anything. 
But genuinely, guys, leave a comment down below letting us know your thoughts. Did we point out some things that maybe you hadn't thought of? Is this a game you're going to go out and find, you know, or at least try cheaper? or try? Are you going to try? Yeah. Have you already purchased it for 60 or $70? There's a lot of questions to be asked. Oh, yeah. But we whatever you do, don't forget to do the importing thing. Go out and play some games. Catch you next time. Thanks, guys.